Hi friends, welcome to today's session. I hope all of you are doing well. Thank you all for your responses on yesterday. And our yesterday's quiz question was, which temple is called as White Pagoda? And the answer is Jagannath Temple in Puri. And let's move to today's discussion. First question for the day, with reference to Convention on Conservation of Migratory Species of Wild Animals, CMS, consider the following statements. Statement 1. It works under the aegis of United Nations Environment Program UNEP. Statement 2. It includes conservation of all terrestrial, aquatic and avian migratory species. Statement 3. India has been designated the President of COP of CMS for next 3 years. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. Option A 1 and 2 only. Option B 2 and 3 only. Option C 1 and 3 only. Option D 1, 2 and 3. The correct answer here is Option D 1, 2 and 3. All the above statements are correct. It is an international agreement that aims to conserve migratory species. It works under the aegis of UNEP. It is also known as the Bourne Convention. And India has been designated the President of COP for the next 3 years. And about migratory animals, they are the essential components of the ecosystem. By acting as pollinators and seed distributors, they contribute to the ecosystem and function. They provide food for other animals and regulate the number of species. They are potentially very effective indicators of environmental changes that affect us all. And reasons for their migration is that to avoid adverse factors like extreme climatic conditions and to manage food shortage and sometimes to manage shortage of water, sometimes to have a better breeding conditions and less competition for safe nesting places etc. So CMS brings together the state and internationally coordinates the conservation measures for these migratory animals. We will now look into a few famous migratory species seen in our country. First one is Siberian crane. It is a critically endangered bird and it is a large strikingly majestic migratory bird that breeds and winters in wetlands and uh, they are known to winter at Kioladio National Park in Rajasthan. Second one is Hawksbill turtle. This is also migratory in nature and uh, nesting occurs in about 70 countries across the world and in India they are found in Andaman and Nicobar Islands and the east coast, the coast of Tamil Nadu and uh, Orissa. Other one is Greater Flamingo. It is the most widespread and largest species of flamingo family and it can be observed at Nal Sarovar Bird Sanctuary in Gujarat. And next one is the Amur Falcon, a least considered species. And the Amur Falcon is a small raptor of the falcon family that breeds in Siberia and uh, northern China and they migrates to winter in southern Africa. And that is the migration pathway of Amur falcon, you can see in the picture. And they visit India while doing so, particularly in Nagaland and uh, parts of Manipur and Assam, you can see in the map. And this migration happens in large number and make, makes it a great spectacle. And uh, this is one of such moments in the picture, the migration of Amur falcons spotted at Pangti village in Nagaland. Now the second question. With reference to Safer Internet Day, consider the following statements. Statement 1. It is organized by the Internet Corporation for assigned names and numbers ICANN. Statement 2. It first began in Europe but is now recognized in around 150 countries worldwide. Which of the above statements is are correct? Option A 1 only. Option B 2 only. Option C both 1 and 2. Option D neither 1 nor 2. Correct answer here is option B2 only. It is not organized by ICANN. On 11th February 2020, the 17th edition of Safer Internet Day is observed. And the theme for the event was Together for a Better Internet. And from cyberbullying to social networking, each year Safer Internet Day aims to raise awareness of emerging online issues and chooses a topic reflecting current concerns. And it is celebrated in many countries across the world and is organized by the InSafe InHop network of awareness centers. 
and many organizations are also part of it for example on the occasion of this year's safer internet day google has asked its users to perform a security check to make sure that their google accounts are safe and uh, google also introduced a password checkup feature that can help users test how strong or weak their passwords are and also the feature enables the users to check if any of their passwords are have been hacked or compromised and the last question for the day with reference to the strength of lok sabha consider the following statement statement 1 article 81 of the constitution defines the composition of lok sabha and statement 2 the constitution does not specify any upper limit for the strength of lok sabha which of the above statements is are correct option a one only option b two only option c both one and two option d neither one nor two correct answer here is option a one only article 81 of the constitution defines the composition of lok sabha the maximum strength of the lok sabha envisaged by the constitution was 552 till recently that includes 530 members to represent states 20 to represent union territories and not more than 2 members of the anglo indian community to be nominated by the president and recently the parliament passed 126th constitution amendment bill 2019 and ended the provision for the nomination of anglo indians to the lok sabha and assemblies and at, so at present the maximum strength is 550 not 552 and the lok sabha at present consists of 543 members of these 530 members are directly elected from the states and 13 from union territories the total number of existing seats as allocated to various states in the lok sabha is on the basis of 1971 census it shall remain unaltered till the first census to be taken after the year 2026 and at present the maximum strength of rajya sabha is that is our quiz question for the day what is the maximum strength of rajya sabha please post your answer in comment section and that's about composition and there is an argument to increase the number of seats in lok sabha from 543 to 1000 by former president pranam mukherjee and for a country like india more representatives are needed to fasten the development process of the country so that's all for today guys don't forget to post your answer to the quiz question in the comment section and your scores also we will meet tomorrow thank you